ladies and gentlemen, there's so much fire inside me. I've waited a long time for this opportunity, for this chance. That is not to say that I was not burning some of those flames in the past from Milton's time right up to John's. But we suffered for it, almost crucified by some of our own comrades. They were not ready to listen. When I was in office at PNDC time, there was a certain minister who was chasing another female minister. <laughs> yeah. Chasing a female minister. And, uh, well, like some of us, but I wanted to talk to the man minister that, why? Can't you hide what you're doing a little? Do you have to carry it on your head? You know, you're married, etc., etc. Be discreet. But in the early part of the flame, the romance, his whole head was inside. <laughs> and I knew he wouldn't listen. Every afternoon, they would come to my office. I'm working. They'll come and sit down. The steward will bring them one bottle of beer. They'll sit down. Then the man minister will take the bottle and pour, you know, fill up the lady's glass and then fill his. Then he'll make a chest and, and start drinking. Day one. I'm working, but I'm watching them too. <laughs> I don't know if some of you saw my daughter with one eye closed. <laughs> anyway, so I'm keeping an eye on them. What do you think I'm looking for? I'm looking for that moment when the romance flame would have gone down a little and with some of us men when the romance goes down the respect also seems to go down which shouldn't be the case That's the moment I knew he would start to he would listen to what I have to say that take your head out of that thing be discreet etc Second day they came, took the bottle, bought for her. I hope he's listening to me. What's I talking about you today? Bought a bottle for her and then fill his own chest and they would drink. The third day, when they came, sat down, beer open, he took it, bought for himself and put the, the bottle down. And I could see from the corner of my eye, is like the woman is looking at him like, what have you done? Oh, he, he was still relaxed. He wasn't bothering to, to correct it. They say, ah, the moment has come to tell him, my friend, cool down. You see what I mean? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying there's so much hot flame inside me that I, I'd love to use this opportunity to say one or two things. Like that minister, the beer man and the lady. Your ears seem to be blocked. You wouldn't listen. And when you got kicked out, put it out, disgraced. That's when I thought, oh yeah, now you will listen. <laughs> Now you will listen. But some of our comrades got across and said, Senior, my brother, we beg you. We find ourselves in opposition. So don't make the burden too heavy for us. It might lead to disintegration, disunity, 
And I'm asking myself, but do you think I'm here to unite good and bad? <laughs> However, I think it pays. I've decided once again to postpone the flame inside. I've decided to postpone the boom inside my stomach. <laughs> I'm looking for the occasion. Truth, accountability, etc. What, have, what haven't we suffered? Do you recall that story about the five million dollars a bachelor's man, Mbwazo, is supposed to have brought me? It took so many years. When the opportunity came, I didn't keep quiet. I said he brought me two million and I used it for nationalistic purposes. My comrades in those days, they knew it. Quite a, a bit of money used to come around and I would leave it to trusted police. I didn't know until we left office how distrustful they could be. The corruption We've been involved in. I have tried to play it as clean as and as neat as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, you know something? I used to have a secretary called Victor Smith. We fell out. It wasn't so much because of disagreement over John Mahama. And yet, that's what he's touting, because I guess him, like a few others who want to be present, have stepped back, being promised, of course, that you make them running mates, I presume. Listen, why did I turn against this boy called Victor Smith? He was my second. Some Nigerians invited us to the USA. I had left office to come and give a talk and commission some business for them. We went. When we returned, subsequently, months or how many years later, when, what's his name, uh, Professor Mills was our flag bearer, that these Nigerians decided to help. So they were dealing with my office, Mr. Victor Smith. Now, when I, I subsequently heard about it, because there was a to and fro over this money, contribution issue, till so somebody finally called me, that this is what is going on. They know me, they want to give me the money and I can pass it on, not give it to Victor Smith. And Victor Smith is saying that, no, he will take it to the professor. I'm not the one who's going to be the candidate. Blah, 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 type of rubbish. <laughs> so, they come on through somebody and said, this is what is going on. Eventually, the contribution did not even come. It did not come. I did not receive any contribution from them through Mills, through Smith, or directly, or through the person who came to see me also. And I don't believe that they sent it to Mills, and I don't believe that, what's his name? Um, Professor Mills received any money from that place. Because I think they got fed up with the way this man was behaving. And yet, when the time to pour poison on me started, this secretary of mine was telling the world on radio stations that contribution was coming for a certain nationalistic duty and he, he had stopped it and diverted it to the flag bearer in other words, he has stopped it from coming to me. I was 
disgusted that this guy would make up such a story. But you know the one who angered me the most? Our Professor Mills, who knew it, knew the truth, but kept quiet for this poison to burn me. I was fraudulent. In our, during our last election, no, in campaign, at the stadium, some character, the son of somebody called domestication, after we had dealt with this five million issue from Nigeria, and I said, no, it was too brought. It has been used for whatever. At this last moment, this domestication son, a crazy man, I believe, urged by some of the crazier ones in our midst, within the presidency, in around the executives, decided to, to, you know, malign me again over this five million. Can you believe, can you believe that this party of ours at their last meeting at this stadium in a crowd, that last big meeting, they invited this character who was making a false allegation against me onto the platform like we are standing right now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I ask myself, what is going on in this party? Who is in charge? What's going on with these executives? So, you people, open your eyes well. Open your mind properly. Otherwise, you're going to be taken through some serious political 419. Oh, we are just the tip. Yeah. But my dream said, I'll leave it at that. Me comfy till the appropriate time. Secondly, no, me, me, I'm sharing these things with you because during that period, during the revolutionary period, when we used to go around the conscientization exercise, I used to tell people that this man who is smiling at you, you know, treating you well in front of your face. Whenever you sleep behind the cell in the bar, the bars, and he brings you the food, he uses his foot to push it inside. By that time you are asleep, so you don't know how he treats you with contempt. <laughs> this man, you don't seem to give much of a damn about. The other one, you are awake, -o. you are asleep. -o. He respectfully carries it, passes it through, and puts it on the floor for you with his hands. A man like this is not treating you with contempt as the one who pushes with his leg. If you were awake, he would use his leg. I know what we've been through. I know what I've been through. Etc. Disgusting things. Painful things. I feel really bad about it, but I guess I have to cultivate the graciousness, the spirit of some of our chiefs. No matter how much we trample on them, they just accommodate it. But it, it, it has a limit. Because when you are beginning to distort and you are destroying our principles completely and we are going off guard, foolish things 
Like what happened to that captain is what happens. Which reminds me actually that another reason why I think I want to contain the booms today is because of what has happened. Yesterday I said it. Let me remind you. Once again, this killing of this officer is not the only one. All this have happened, especially to women. I said this killing children right on this machine is another one. I don't know whether he stole some fish in the morning. You should see what they, do, they did to him. It's horrible. There was a time I would see, you know, there are about two such uh, videos where elderly people, men, women, elderly, have been kicked, booted, doing karate practices. I couldn't understand the language. In Africa, Africans, and try to cripple them and burn them. Burn them. Poor old folks. I'm sure it's because the damn idiots, excuse my word, my choice of it, you know, amongst them, the community must have been accusing them of witchcraft and wizardry. Your mother's mother, your grandmother, your grandfather. I wanted to send this video around the continent, inviting other heads of state to search for those responsible for it and to punish them. If not, this thing will continue. Little did I know that down the line, a year later, I'll be seeing this, I'll be seeing this horror in my own country. No. It's been happening not by a mob. Maybe we don't see them. Individuals have been suffering. It's reported in the papers, those we read and see. I kept asking, let's deal with some of these characters briefly. The manner in which I'm robbers. A retired officer. I don't know whether he spent 30, 40 minutes fighting off armed robbers. Everybody in the community, nobody wanted to open this door. Following morning, found him dead, butchered. Fighting alone. Some of them, it's not enough for them to rob you. They'll rob and rape the women, the young ladies. This kind of rubbish, this kind of foolishness should have been dealt with appropriately. This kind of, this, was the officer tricked? Are some are claiming for something like this to be done to him? No, no. In the past, when this kind of thing used to happen, they would slap him, bash him a few times, and hand him over to the police. Where did we go wrong and have to go so far to kill, smash, blocks, etc., only to discover he's an innocent officer? I think the whole country has become so shocked. I hope so. So I decided maybe I'm not going to drop the booms in order to take attention of what has affected us in terms of this officer's death, how he was killed. How merciless, how cruel can we be?
There's no time. I could have told you quite a few things to make us wake up that this uncivilized behavior won't do. Grab him, whip him, beat him. If he's a true, genuine thief, and hand him over to the police. Don't do what we saw. My brothers and my sisters, since I decided I'm not going to, you know, talk too much, and I didn't want to make any booms, I decided that I would put my thoughts on paper and make it statesman-like. Align? So there's the statesman one, and then there's the revolutionary one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just give me two, three, four more minutes. The one now. Now for saying it, say you, Pelpo. Distinguished traditional leaders, leading members of the NDC, my brothers and sisters. Ah, please, hold on a minute, excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, please forgive me. When I entered, I didn't come there to acknowledge you or to express my greetings, okay? Sorry. The proud people of Wa and sympathizers, drawn from the length and breadth of the country, I want to thank you for your warm welcome since I arrived in Wa yesterday. The reception has been exceptional and charged. My special gratitude goes to now for saying he's saving people and the Upper West Regional House of Chiefs for the warm reception at the palace and the honor down me with the unskillment as the Bagala Pina. A title that signifies the very spiritual and unifying essence of Wa as a kingdom. The massive presence here during the season of the Ramadan fasting is indicative of the fact that the people of Wa still appreciate the true values of June 4 and uphold it with great pride. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm greatly pained by the events of the past few days. The dust, steadily wicked, irrational, and needless murder of Captain Maxwell Mahama constrains me so much. Nonetheless, I will share a few thoughts about the very importance of June 4th and most especially remind us of the underlying values and principles which guided the popular uprising. In this respect, so much has been said by some of our senior comrades from two days ago as well as today, listening to some of them also reminding us about where we've come from. The principles of June 4 are not alien or has never been alien to mankind. They are no different from the most basic religious or human values. Property, accountability, and social justice would on any day liberate the overwhelming majority of our people from the bondage or difficulties they find themselves in. The fight against corruption, greed, and avarice has, however, been at great cost. Hold it and listen. Noble soldiers have died, noble civilians have died for it, and so many of the noble ones have suffered and continue to suffer all kinds of indignities for their principles and convictions. To the extent that even when some of these old foundation layers attend some of our functions, we don't even recognize them to give them front seats as NPP of all whatever it is, even does. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have heard of stories of our foundation layers, the old gods, even trying to enter the castle after I left office, and people have been put at the castle gate who don't know them and won't allow them in. People who serve with 100% integrity to be treated this way. <laughs> yeah. I must look for your language word for it. That is painful. Abi Aram. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me say it. Together with Nana, my wife, we have faced the most unimaginable consequences trying to protect and defend these principles. Very cruel insults and humiliations have been designed and are still being designed to shut off any influence that I may still command even at the political uh, party, in the political party that was founded and built by us. Ladies and gentlemen, to the comrades whose tenacity has provided the voice of conscience within this country and the NDC, I am profoundly grateful. We owe you a debt of gratitude. Ladies and gentlemen, there have been times in the past when I felt true like saying stop the train and let me get off the only thing that has however prevented me from doing so is the plight the remaining good people would face such a departure would allow the enemies of greed and avarice and dishonesty to further deepen their claws on you and the party. We squandered many opportunities to clean up and to restore the June 4th principles in the party. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody is saying don't make money. Make it good and clean. But not some of the ones that I've known sickening the kind of greed, selfishness look at where it landed us or is it because this government is not behaving the way Kufor did in his time so we think yeah, we're okay I know what's going on I know some of the things we are running into and in spite of that, a vehicle is a... No, next time. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind people that we could not have possibly forgotten that generals were executed 79 in the rage and anger because of corruption the greed corruption and injustice of today believe it or not is a thousand times more than what these generals were executed for and if we are unable to restore a fair measure of integrity into our dealings, then the blood of many would have been shed in vain. If we cannot get our claws off and allow for fresh leadership to emerge 
then we shall sink even further. Not too long ago, I thought we had the jockeys training the horses were responsible for this disgraceful failure. While one of the horses was bold enough to lay the failure of the doorstep also at the, at the step of the jockeys. For me, we lost our masses because we betrayed the values of June 4th. However, if this horse jockey business cannot be resolved comprehensively, allowing integrity, most of all, to prevail, then let both of them step aside and allow for fresh leaders with solid integrity to provide the needed leadership. The other day, Dr. Kumo was reminding us, and this is the way it's been, how we can grab our greed so much money and now use it as a political weapon to perpetuate and be king makers. If I was doing it this way, if my colleagues and I were doing it this way, would any of them be where they are today? No. We believe in justice in fairness, true democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, let us endeavor to stand by the truth and restore and instill the values of June 4th in our country's culture. Yesterday when I paid a taxi call on the one up and members of the regional house of chiefs, I called for unity and peace in your communities. This morning, the president of the Queen Mothers reiterated that call by pleading for peace to guarantee development. Most of you are not unaware of the simmering undercurrents within your communities. Do not allow differences that can be resolved with consultation and compromise to degenerate into bitterness and potential conflict. This call is not this call is not unique to Oniwa and its related communities. This is a call to the whole country, and quite a number of lives have been lost in the recent past due to our failure to resolve our differences and an increasing canker of intolerance. Ghana prides itself in the peaceful coexistence of persons of diverse ethnic, religious, and political persuasions, and we cannot allow that reputation, that reputation to be compromised. Distinguished traditional leaders and all gathered here today, Ghana needs us to stand up for what is right, just and positive for growth and development. The sociopolitical development of Ghana is dependent on our consistency in defending the ideals of truth, integrity, probity, and accountability. Let that be our guiding principle in everything we do. I thank you so much for your presence and goodwill and wish you all the best in your endeavors.